Ghost Member Video. Originally recorded during the Force for Good class series in January 2016 with Sharon Salzberg and friends. Well, to begin with, we look at our own happiness, which seems ironic because I think we're often taught that that's selfish or self-centered or self-preoccupied, and that's, in some ways, you would say that's the whole problem. But it's actually not the urge to be happy that's the problem. It's our very limited notions and distorted thinking about where happiness is to be found, the greatest happiness is to be found. You know, if only, I had a bigger apartment, I would be happy. If only I had the perfect relationship, which of course would never, ever, ever change, then I would be happy. If only they made a Toyota sedan with four wheel drive again, then I would be happy. These are, you know, my personal <laughs> If only, whatever. Um, you know, and, and really, if we can combine that urge for happiness with wisdom instead of with ignorance and just what we've been taught and, you know, being kind of gullible, just believing the things we've been taught, then it's a very powerful force because then that urge for happiness becomes like a homing instinct for freedom. We can cut through many obstacles. So the Dalai Lama, back when his English was not quite as good as it is now, but I like the old way he used to say it. He used to say, if you're going to be selfish, be a wise selfish. In other words, if you want to be happy, figure it out. And our own happiness is not something, when it's not just endlessly seeking pleasure, or something very superficial, being conflict avoidant, when it's much deeper than that, it's like a resource. That's the place from which we can care about others. We can make efforts to help. That's the place from which we can even pay attention to others. Because really, don't we know that when we feel depleted and exhausted and overcome and broken inside, it's not that easy to have even the wherewithal to try to help somebody, to even notice. And if we do notice, we're resenting. You know, like you think you've got problems. Like, Right, so our own happiness, if you redefine it, is really the basis for a sense of inner resource. Another way it's sometimes described um, in the Buddhist teaching, when they talk about material generosity, it's also symbolic for generosity of the spirit, the way we are with somebody who's taking care of us, or. Uh, whether we thank somebody or we pay attention to somebody uh, when they're talking to us, right? But we often use material generosity as an example because it's concrete and it just helps in, to um, illuminate all these issues because of that. So we might give somebody something, you know, sh offer them a meal or give them an object for a whole lot of different reasons. Maybe we offer somebody something because we really want them to have it. Maybe we offer them something and it's more like a medium of exchange. Well, I see you have that really cool thing and like I like that pen, for example. And if you, no, 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 <laughs> but uh, thank you. <laughs> you know, so if, if I give you this whatever, maybe you'll give me the pen or maybe I don't feel I deserve to have anything. And I just give, but it's almost a kind of martyrdom. It's not really generosity. Or maybe 
there's a video camera on me, or it feels like I'm obliged to somehow offer when I don't really want to. And it's said that the best kind of generosity comes from a sense of inner abundance. To learn about the Tibet House member archives and upcoming Tibet House member trips with geographic expeditions, please visit tibethouse.us. Tashi Dilek, and thanks for watching.